So we all have to use stock footage at some point or another. It's just an inevitable part of making great videos. The problem is sometimes when you put a stock clip in your edit, it sort of sticks out a little bit. It feels different from the clips before and after it, and it can sometimes feel a little bit jarring. In this video, I'm gonna show you some techniques for how I like to deal with that. So first I wanna talk about color. Most stock clips are provided with a base layer of color correction on them, generally conforming them to Rec. 709 color space. This means they already have some contrast and saturation added, but nowadays most clips are shot in what's called log, which is this higher dynamic range image with more data that we can push colors around in. Stock clips are usually Rec. 709, so you can just drop them into your edit without needing to know anything about any of this color space stuff. The problem is sometimes it just causes things not to match quite right, and you can't really add your creative grades on top. So fair warning, we're about to get into some dicey kind of color space related things. So hopefully I'm not about to put everyone to sleep. So here is some footage from Big Bend uh, with me just walking around and this is the stock clip. Okay. And as you can see, it kind of already has a little bit of color correction applied to it. Now, all this other footage was shot in log, which is what most people are shooting with these days. It gives you the most dynamic range and, and kind of ability to change the colors in post. But stock footage usually doesn't come that way. It usually comes in Rec. 709. What I'm going to show you is a rather unscientific way to sort of fix this problem. It's actually really easy to convert Rec. 709 footage back to log. You can't really get super accurate results without knowing the exact camera and color space your footage was shot with, but you can definitely get it close. Just go to Google and search for free Rec. 709 conversion LUTs. And that should bring you to this site, which has a great pack of conversion LUTs that you can choose from. If you don't know what a LUT is, it's a whole thing of its own, but I'll link a video in the description that will give you a rundown. So this clip, currently Rec. 709. We're going to uh, drag a Lumetri color effect to it. Here in the basic correction uh, tab, we're gonna drop that down. We're gonna make sure it's active. Go to this input LUT drop down, and you will find your uh, where you have your downloaded conversion LUTs. And uh, I actually just used this third one because it seemed to match my type of log pretty well, but uh, you, you might just want to run through them all. But in the utility folder, you'll see a generic Rec. 709 to log folder. And you'll also notice they have specific ones for different cameras, which you're not always going to know which camera your stock clip was shot with, but they do just have a generic Rec. 709 to log folder. So boom, now our, this clip is matching these other clips much more. Okay, see how they, they all kind of sit in that sort of gray washed out vibe now. So now we can color correct it the same way that we were color correcting the other clips and things are going to look uh, a little bit more cohesive. So now let's talk about using stock clips on top of stock clips so that the stock clips feel more like not stock clips. An underrated way to use stock sometimes is as just cool texture that just gives things a little bit more life. I'll just throw a bunch of crazy overlays and effects on top of it so that it just feels like a totally different thing than the stock clip that you downloaded. So stuff like film grain, film burns, like flashy text, things like that, fog overlays. There's lots of different types of stock clips that you can use to sort of really change up the look of a stock clip. So I'll show you some of my most common tricks. So like, you know, if we're trying to cut this little skateboard montage, we have this shot and the whole thing is in slow-mo, okay? So we're, uh, you know, let's do some speed ramping. You gotta do some speed ramping. So first we're gonna drag it into our sequence. We're gonna right click on our clip and we're gonna, on this little drop down where it says show clip keyframes, we're going to go to time remapping and select speed. And so now when we hit the P key, it brings up this little pin tool. So we're gonna go to the part where we want our motion to kind of be normalized right there. And I'm gonna add a little keyframe there. And we're gonna go to a little bit further down and we're gonna add another one. You just click kind of on this little line. And then on the front end, I'm going to click and drag up. And that's gonna speed up that part of the clip. And then on the back end, I'm going to do the same. And on the back end, I'm going to go way higher. We're going to go up to like, I don't know, 2000. And then if we zoom in, you can see there's these little kind of handles. You just click on them and you can just drag on one side. And that's going to kind of spread out the change. And that's going to make that kind of ramp effect. So now the move kind of goes like that. Okay. 
and then it comes out. I'm gonna take this little setup here. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say nest and hit okay. Um, and I basically do this all the time. I do it so much that it's just like secondhand memory now. So with the clip selected, we'll go up to effect controls. And at the beginning of the clip, I'm gonna hit a, I'm gonna start the position and scale uh, keyframe on the stopwatch here. And then I'm gonna hit the down key. And that's gonna go to the end of the clip. And then I'm gonna hold down the control key and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to scale and it's gonna zoom in just like that. And then on position, I'm gonna just kind of reframe the clip a very subtly just like that so now it almost looks like a it looks like a really dynamic move it looks like you know maybe someone was running with a gimbal or something like that so i downloaded some kind of film grainy type things to play around with this one's kind of this one's pretty cool it's very very intense um so i'm gonna i'm gonna grab that and i'm gonna go to this part with like the cool letters fly, flying up and I'm gonna select that part and we're gonna drag it on top. Now, here we can play with overlay modes. So we're gonna select our clip and uh, first I'm gonna make sure it's scaled correctly. So we'll right click and say set to frame size. And with the clip selected, we'll go up to effect controls and in the opacity dropdown, we can play with some different overlay methods. So I think this one multiply, uh, so that's gonna remove all the white. Um, if we wanted to kind of go the other direction, we could say uh, add and that's going to remove all of the black areas. So it's gonna go Sorry, I like to make sound effects. But what if you wanna customize and animate vector design elements like these free ones from FreePick? Sometimes things aren't quite the right color or the scale doesn't fit just right the way you need it to. So a very common thing that happens to me is a client will download a vector graphic somewhere like a free stock site like FreePick and they'll send it to me and, and ask me to animate it. And usually they want some colors changed around so that it matches their branding, things like that. So let's say you know how to animate in After Effects but you don't know anything about Illustrator and you don't want to deal with any of that. You just want to do it all inside of After Effects. So in After Effects we're going to right click, hit import, file, and uh, we're going to select our AI file and we want to make sure where it says import as, we want to make sure that we say composition. We'll hit import. And if we do it that way, then these things will come in as their own separate layers, okay? So let's make a new composition, 1920 by 1080, hit okay. And let's go ahead and drag everything into our new comp. And as you can see, it's all kind of too small, okay? So uh, we're, we're gonna hit S, with all of them selected and just scale them up. And as you can see, we kind of run into a problem here. It's not optimized for uh, 1920 by 1080. So we can't really just like squash it out because that would, uh, you know, squash the text. We're going to go ahead and take the background and uh, the background's okay if we sort of extend it a little bit. So we're going to right click on the background layer and say fit to comp. So for now, let's focus on colors, okay? so. Our background needs to be a different color. They don't have blue in their branding at all. With our layer selected, we can go to effect, color correction, and select hue and saturation. Now here, we can just change this color however we want, okay? So let's say this this kind of darkish red is their, their main brand color. And then uh, the other thing is they don't have this color orange in any of their branding. Their branding is actually more of a uh, kind of tealish, lightish blue. And this is a effect that I use all the time for this. It's pretty, uh, uh, it's pretty underrated in my opinion. I'll go to effect, color correction, and I'll select change to color. And here we have a from color and a to color. So we can select that orange that shows up a few places. Then we're gonna select their brand color, which I think we said was like a, let's say it's kind of like a, this sort of a blue. And uh, as you can see, we've ac accidentally changed the color of this guitar too, which we don't really wanna do. Um, so what, what you can do is just, you go to these different sliders and just change it. Usually the hue slider will fix it for you, yeah. So there we go. You can kind of select which, how much it's gonna look at those various hues. And now we can just, uh, because our text uh, isn't correct there, we can just take that and hit Control C and we will go to our text layer and Control V, paste it. Now it's all kind of in the same realm. Okay, so how are we going to make all this fit our 1920 by 1080 comp? So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna make three copies of this objects layer. Boom, boom, right there, we have three now. Then I'm gonna grab the pen tool and with one of them selected, I'm just gonna go around 
and select these various areas. And so now we can just move them around however we want and rescale them and do whatever. And now we can, you know, move our text around, get it in, in position independently. Now, one thing we always want to do anytime we have a vector graphic is we want to make sure that we click this middle button here. And that's going to kind of make sure that it's rasterizing continuously and everything is nice and sharp no matter what size it is. So now that we've got the colors right and everything split up into sections, we can add little animations to each specific part. But yeah, this is how I, you know, make sure I can animate things and change things as I need them uh, without going back and forth between Illustrator. So I hope you found these tips helpful. Just download some stuff, experiment, make it, make stock clips your own. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.